You two wait here. They can't even afford a doorbell? Shh. If you interrupt a train of thought around here, you might put off meeting the Martians another 15 years. but we're looking for Professor Daniel Potter. Sir, Don't uh, be repetitious, young man. We heard you. He's in his laboratory down that corridor to the right. Oh, and uh, be very careful. When Potter's on the threshold of something, he can be quite excitable. <laughs> off your last run. Incredible, Dinky. How about that? How about that? Dinky hasn't run this maze in two months. We're definitely improving his memory. Have a banana. Oh, Go well, get your progress you. chart, Dinky. Go ahead. Go Professor ahead. Potter, we're here to investigate a number of complaints to the effect that you're keeping some sort of ferocious animal here on the premises. Ferocious? <laughs> Ah, oh, thank you, Dinky. Ferocious, huh? Well, I wonder who that could be. You suppose it could be Millard? Or Melba here? Or could it be these ferocious denizens of the jungle? Gentlemen, for seven years here at Braden Institute, we've been conducting an experiment to rid the so-called lower animals of ferocity, anger, fear, the predatory instinct, if you will, with the ultimate aim of eliminating such baser drives from Homo sapiens. I must say, to date, we've been remarkably successful. And the only really ferocious creatures in this room are you and I. What, uh, what sort of complaints? First off, Norden Farm says that in the past six weeks, five of their Jersey cows have stopped giving milk because of strange guttural noises after dark. Mm -hmm. Go on. And a farmer across the way says that a large, furry, night prowling animal has run four of his mules off lately. Also, officers, you've come to the wrong place. A rather surly gentleman who lives on the next estate keeps an ill tempered Doberman. The other night we were taking a stroll and he almost scared Fluffy to death. Fluffy? My cat. Stand your ground, men. Out of my way. I... Let me get up here. Where are you, Captain? I'll give the orders around here. already stomped on his tail. Don't scare him half to death. What are you doing up there? Now look out, look out, look out. Hey, boy, don't be scared. He didn't mean to hurt you. Uh, Professor, get back. Oh, Please, let me get a oh, shot at him. Poor fellow, scared to death. Let's see what they did to your tail. Stand back, Professor, stand back. Let me get a shot, let me get a shot. <laughs> oh, but I swear you get out of my way. I can't get out of your way. <laughs> that's 
Wait, how dare you barge in here and try to shoot my cat? That's a pellet gun. Knockout pellets to put him to sleep. Absolutely harmless. Now, please, come on. Give me the gun. Keep your distance. Can't you can't do something before I fall into his jaws? Professor, I am under instructions to capture, impound, and lock that lion up. Fluffy has never been locked up in his life, not for one minute. Why, that magnificent animal is the culmination of seven years' study. He has perfection in the lion. He is incapable of ferocity. All right. All right, if he's as sweet and meek as you say he is, you can have him back. But in the meantime, I gotta put him in a cage. Cage my cat? Fill him with anxiety? Get out of here. Get out of here. All of you. I'm losing my grip. <laughs> Professor, please, hand me the pellet gun back so I can take him alive. Otherwise, I'm gonna have to take him with this. Fluffy, get out of here! before you pass out. are trying to impound Fluffy. Oh, you can't be serious. On, on what grounds, Professor? Some local crank has reported him to be, now hear this, dangerous. Dangerous? <laughs> Fluffy! Oh, no, I never heard of anything so crazy. Why, well, we'll have to see to it that reason prevails. Now, here. You take Fluffy in my car, scoot across the state line to some little out-of-the-way place, and shoot me a wire. I'll hold down the fort here. Right. Come on, Fluffy. Let's go, boy. Come on. Let's go. If a monkey can do it, I can do it. We've left the rampaging ignorance of the law far behind. <laughs> Are you catching cold? Come here, open up. Open up. Nice and wide. Come on, open up. Come on, now, open up. Open up. Nice and wide. Ah. Say ah. Ah. Now you have no inflammation. That's all right. That's good. Possibly a mild allergy. The hackberries are likely to send this time of year. Rest up, Fluff. We'll find a spot for the night.
Well, you're just tuckered out, aren't you, boy? I'll meet you outside. Hello, Tommy. Has Mother checked out yet? Just now. May I have a piece of paper, please? Mm. Anything you'd like me to tell your father when he returns, Miss Claridge? The plane isn't leaving for three hours. If he returns before then, have him call me at the airport. Too bad you can't wait for him. Well, somebody's got to mother mother. I'll hold her hand as far as New York, and from there she's on her own. If Father wishes to get in touch with me, I'm leaving an itinerary through April. Yes, ma'am. Uh, help you, sir? Oh, yes. Uh, I, I noticed that you uh, welcome pets. I have a rather exceptional experimental cat. Very well disciplined, gentle to a fault. Actually, it's only physically that yes. he resembles a lion no. at all. No. I take him everywhere the, I go. The meal hasn't been delivered yet. Sir, uh, your cat would be most welcome, sir, but we have no vacancies. We're primarily an apartment hotel. Oh, dear. We've driven quite a distance. You wouldn't happen to know of a rooming house nearby, would you? We need accommodations only for the night. No, I can't think of one, sir. What about my apartment? Well, now, Miss Claridge... Oh, now, Tommy, really, why can't you move my things out and start renting it? It's just wasted space year in and year out. I'll tell your father, but I think he'd rather hold it for you. At any rate, it's available tonight. So you and your cat make yourself comfortable. Thank you. Thank you very much. Misomorphic. Morphic or whatever, they don't come any nicer. Uh, two, four, one, Mr. Uh, Potter. Potter. Uh -huh. I'll have the linen changed. Thank you. I'll get fluffy. Hello, I'm Robert Brighton. I believe I have a reservation. Oh, yes, Brighton. The bridal suite. <laughs> Congratulations. Thank you. Uh, could you wake us up at six in the morning, please? Uh, we'll ring. No, I'd rather you didn't. The telephone sometimes startles Fluffy. Fluffy? My cat. Uh, I wouldn't want him to cry out and disturb your other guests. We'll have someone rap at your door. Fine, thank you very much. Come on, fellow. Come on. <laughs> Steady, Mr. Sweeney. Uh, are you just going to stand there and let that thing go on upstairs? What thing? Wh the lion. Now, Mr. Sweeney, you know better than that. But I'm telling you, Griswold, he's bigger than a polo, po po polo pony. You. You are going to pieces, Mr. Sweeney. You, the trouble with you is you've been neglecting your cat. Uh -huh. Oh, yes, yes, yes. A lot of the guests have heard him meowing. Meowing? What has that got to do with the lions? Everything. You see, you are beginning to feel guilty. And this causes the image of a cat to grow larger in your mind till it assumes monstrous proportions. Now, you go up and feed him, and you'll feel a lot better. <laughs> Listen, did or did not a lion just register here? What? A lion, king of the beasts. Oh, why, certainly. We put him in the, uh, the elephant suite. The what? You know, where we keep your pink one. <laughs> Any word for Mr. Claridge? Uh, not a word. I don't... I... Please. It's not like Mr. Claridge. Disappearing for three whole days without a single word. Letting things pile up. 
That's right, Dr. A. E. Braden, Braden Institute. Just worded, registered at, um, Claridge Arms Hotel, Midland. Fluffy in fine fettle. Uh, notify moment erroneous complaint withdrawn. Mm-hmm. Oh, and add, love to Dinky. Signed, Daniel. Thank you. Good evening, sir. Well, hello. Come in, come in. How are you? Better, I suppose, but I still see spots. Why complain? Oh, the things some people see. Tell me, do you have room service here? Oh, yeah, you dial one and they send it up in the dumbwaiter. Good, we're ravenous. Well, we have something in common. Really? What? I was referring to Miss Claridge. I see she's a spelunker. Yeah, she has been acting a little bit peculiar lately. A uh, spelunker is one who explores caves. What's the matter? They don't answer. Oh, let it keep ringing. child. I suppose she's gone this time for good. Oh, the father. Really? What sort of person is he? Crazy, that's what. Oh, he looks meek and mild enough, but he's dangerous. I know the type. Believe me, keeps too many guns. I wouldn't be in your shoes, young man. Not for a minute. If he comes back in ill sort and finds Janice gone, well, he just my turn. Turn? Hello? Room service? Oh, yes. Uh, we'd like 35 hamburgers, please. Yes, that's right. 34 with onions and one without. And a pot of coffee. And if possible, a tub of pablum. <laughs> That's right, I said 34. If, if you don't mind, sir, I'm feeling somewhat queer. I think I've been too cooped up. Oh, well, don't bother then. I'll, I'll finish up. Thanks. Maybe I just need glasses. No, you needn't warm the milk. Just make a mulch of it. Yes, about three gallons. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, sugar would be a fine idea. About a pound and a half. No more, though. Uh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you. Okay, I'll fly there. You'll stand up and go, you'll bow. Sonny, I can't get in my door. The wall keeps moving. Let me help you, uh, Mr. Sweeney. Would you? It's very kind of you, sir. Mm -hmm. well, watch that. Now, you go in there and feed your kitty, Mr. Sweeney, before this whole thing gets too deep-rooted. I can do that. Prove it. Mm. 
Pardon the interruption, sir. That's all right. But I'm Griswold, the manager. We're trying to reach Mr. Claridge, and sometimes he telephones his daughter oh, here right. in this apartment. Well, of course, I'll have him ring the desk. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Fluffy, come on in here. Don't you want your hamburgers? <laughs> Let me take that for you, Mr. Claridge. Oh, thanks. I sure enjoy these outings with you fellas. Uh, breathers, I call them. <laughs> I kind of hate to go back to the hotel. Well, don't. You know, I gave four different women a chance to be happy. I had to scuttle every one of them. Oh, oh, oh now, now, catfish. <laughs> okay, stay stuck and die miserable. You know, the least you could do is stick around for a little game of poker. Sure, what's a couple of days more? Yeah, just... Two more days to explain. Oh, don't go back, Jim. This is the first time in two years you've taken off. Hey. You know, you are violating the Bill of Rights. It says right off in the preamble before it gets around to saying anything else that a man's first duty is the pursuit of happiness. You better do it while there's still some place left to fish. You know, they tell me they're going to rezone Yellowstone National Park for high-rise apartments. Well, I'm... I'm sticking... Sticking around because of Janice. <laughs> I don't know what more you could give her. Yeah, she's seen everything and been every place except the top of Mount Everest, and she got halfway up there. Well, well thanks. I, I can see to it that she meets a respectable young man and settles down. <clears throat> you know, the girl hasn't found herself. That's why she keeps bouncing all over the globe. Well, let's go, boys. don't have that much pablum, dump in some oatmeal. It doesn't matter. We're famished. Right. Fluffy, what are you doing? I told you to stay out of that closet, didn't I? Didn't I? These things belong to Miss Claridge. Now get out of here. Come in. Find anything your size? No, I, I don't wear... I'm sorry. My cat opened this thing up, you see. Yes, you said he was well-trained. I ran off without our tickets. I'll just get them while you're uh, picking things over. Ketchup, just, just some smelling salts. 
smelling salt? Hey, don't eat the phone. Control yourself. I'm as hungry as you are. I told you there was something strange in that room. We'd better feed it. Yeah. Find it off. Get him, out of here! Caleb! You're choking me! You're choking me! You're choking me! You're choking me! Is that the cat you brought in here? Yes, Fluffy. Shake hands with Miss Clara. Keep away from me! Keep away from me! You think you're being funny! All right, Fluffy, go sit in the corner. Go over the corner. You see how gentle he is? Actually, you've hurt his feelings. Oh, I'm very sorry, but I'm a little sensitive myself. Why don't you lock him in a bathroom or something? Oh, Fluffy wouldn't harm a flea. He likes people, especially pretty girls. All right. Come on, Fluffy. Go to the other room. Come on, boy. Go on. I've met all kinds, but never a lion tamer. It happens that I'm a professor of comparative psychology, Miss Claridge, with the Braden Institute. More precisely, Daniel Potter. I don't know whether this is a pleasure or not. I'm surprised they let you bring him in here. No one objected. Believe me, Fluffy is the product of selective breeding. I raised him. I molded his personality. He's really much more like a lazy old sheepdog than a cat. I'd much rather have a lazy old sheepdog. I don't care to have him showering his affections on me. Hey, I notice you've got the makings of a martini in there. Would you like me to make you one? No, thanks. I have to leave. But you can help yourself. There's cheese and a few tidbits in the refrigerator. Okay. We now conclude our program with five minutes of the latest news. No further report as to the whereabouts of Professor Daniel Potter or his lion, who answers to the name of Fluffy. Three officers Potter shot are still unconscious. Potter is reported to be a psychopath with homicidal tendencies. Extreme oh. caution should be exercised in dealing with him. Outwardly, he is described as being deceptively mild, even ingratiating. We will give you further reports from time to time as bulletins are received. <gasps> the city council today took action. Sharp. <laughs> Sharp and tangy. Want a slice? Uh, I, I, yes, I, uh, I, I may have a smidgen. Now, I don't want to twist your arm, but I do turn a wicked martini. Uh, oh, I, I think I will have a drink. Ah, that's more like it. I was telling the maid, I'm also a spelunker. Not really. What pains have you explored? Oh, Texas, down in Mexico primarily. Oh, I've done most of my exploring in Kentucky. It's great kicks, I think. I found some fascinating shells. My group was looking for bats, a variety of the vampire, carriers of a certain virus. You'll notice I have the ice already. I had no intention of allowing such a charming young lady to escape me. Listen, why don't we get down to the cocktail lounge? No, we're all set up here. Oh, oh come on. I I'd rather have a scotch. Oh, call room service. And wait for them to distill it? Besides, it's a cozy little hole. Just right for a couple of spelunkers who might want to dance. Well, I don't look very presentable. Oh, you look great. No. Oh, come on. I just like handsome men who oh, make a show of modesty. Fast. You're no. terrific. I've, That's the last bouquet. I've, now, come on. I've got to get my coat. Uh. <laughs> oh! Oh, you're so jealous. You're so jealous. Come on. Be right back, Fluffy. Hold the fort. Where have we got here? <laughs> How about that? I ran off with their gun. <laughs> oh, I'm always walking off with someone's cigarette lighter myself. Oh, 
Oh, several policemen panicked this morning. They were very badly misinformed. I suppose on occasion I am rather sharp with people. Still, unbridled ignorance is what we're striving to eliminate, isn't it? Well, let's not talk shop. Looks like an empty booth. You know something? We have so little time. Why don't you pick up our drinks? I'll have mine on the rocks. On the rocks. Uh -huh. With a twist? Please. Scotch on the rocks with a twist. And a martini, please. Yes, sir. Be right there, sir. Why don't we have the rest of the champagne sent up for our room? Sound like a good idea? Hi. Hi. Do you mind sending this up to room 341, please? Yes, sir, right away. Thank you. Pretty direct. You tell that. Huh. You're impulsive too, aren't you? Mm hmm. And so am I. There's something about you that triggered me right off. You may not guess it, but I'm a person of extremes. Uh, well, why don't you uh, play something bouncy for a couple of spelunkers? Why not? I know maniac that everyone's looking for. He's here. What? Wait, it's... Who is this? He's in. He's right. Hello. Hello. Shall we dance? Say that again. Shall we dance? Are you some kind of crank? Hello. Hello? This alarm is without foundation. Oh. Why don't you ask me to dance? Yes. Shall we dance? Was that call from the inside or, or the outside? I don't know. Wow. You're really a marvelous dancer. You're a wonderful dancer, too. You really think so? <laughs> Isn't that amazing? You know, all my life I've enjoyed dancing. Oh, I can tell. Really? <laughs> I haven't had much chance to learn these, these Latin American steps, though. They're very good, aren't they? Well, that's a sneaky step. <laughs> Mambo. Mambo? Is that what I'm doing? Yes. I think I'm getting the hang of it. Wonderful, isn't it? Yes! Fix the record! Fix the record! Broken! Oh! You know how to do the twist? Speaking of being impulsive, you're not going to make that plane. Why not? You're going to stay right here on impulse. Uh -huh. And I'm going to let the treadmills go untended for a day or two. Uh -huh. You and I are going to get better acquainted if I keep you here at gunpoint. Oh! Taxi! 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 Hurry up and get down in the 
a seat. Where to? Please headquarters. kind of a switchboard we ought to have. Just help me trace that call. I'm trying to. Well, now, look, uh, madam, will you please get off this line? Will you please get off? This is an emergency. Would you get... I know I disconnected you. What's more, I will disconnect you again unless you immediately get... Oh, hello, hello, hello Mr. Clary. Later, Mr. Goodwill. Right. What are you doing with that thing like that for? Oh, dear good heavens, let me take care of you. Don't, 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 just sit there. Unplug me. Janice. Oh, Janice, dear. <laughs> Will you stop being so playful? Now, come on. Be nice. Will you stop? Cut it out. Now, you're going to tear the sheet. Now, you cut it out, or I'll make you get off the bed. Will you stop that? Stop being that way. Hello, hello, hello. Hmm. Phone's dead. Well, at least they won't disturb us. I hope they don't forget to call us early. Frankly, I'd like to get out of here before the old man comes. He is crazy. If you're not coming out, Janice, stand clear of that door. You won't need to, sir. Here, give me that. Oh, I was you... talking to my cat. No, let me have that gun, please. Let go of that. Please. please. I'm awfully sorry, sir. Give me that gun. No, sir, please. Come on down now. Give me that gun. Sir, this, this is a very humorous misunderstanding. Please hear me out. How? Yeah. Your daughter is not here. Both she and your wife checked out. Both? Did they, uh, did they say where they were going? To Europe, I believe. They, they left a note. Shall we send down for it? No, no thanks. It doesn't really matter. <laughs> Oh, no. Not again. Hickey. Hickey. Hickey, Hickey. Milky.
tell you. Hey. Hallucination or not, I want it caged. That roar alone's enough to scare you. That's a domestic variety, Mr. Sweeney. Actually, you don't have to cage it. Just keep feeding him. He'll get smaller. But you... Uh, your daughter, Janice, is, uh... She's, she's rather unpredictable, isn't she? Uh -huh. You know women. I don't know them at all. I haven't seen enough of my wife or daughter in the last ten years to get acquainted. Oh, well, it doesn't matter. They've gone, and that's that. I don't know. Stay stuck and you die miserable. That's about the size of it. You know, for a long time, I've wanted to get away from it all. <laughs> Well, you'll feel better on a full stomach. Why don't you stay and have hamburgers with us? No. No, thanks. I don't think so. Hey, this is heavy. Oh, uh, how would you like to come upstairs for some venison? Venison? Yeah. My cat Fluffy loves venison. Well, bring him along. I'll have my chef carve us some nice fat steaks. Hey, we'll be right up. Do that again. I'm sorry, Miss Appleby. <laughs> You dropped your gun, Mr. Griswold. Oh! oh. Follow me. How awful. Don't let the women in. 
Ghostly. Everything but his change. It was just been one of those days. The mail was late, nobody picked up the trash, and, and you broke my switchboard. Better notify his wife before the plane leaves. Poor Claridge. Clean a job as I've seen of it. Oh, well. It's the way Claridge would have had it. through your mind when you heard that your husband had been devoured. Found in all points. Man eater and potter both still at large. So how did that animal get in here? Uh, well, I thought he was just an ordinary alley cat. Quiet. That was a real lion you saw. You saw a real lion. But he keeps switching back and forth. Nobody's a lot out. Not until that critter's shot. Shot? Shot. <laughs> Please! Please call off your posse! You've got no right to shoot my cat! Your cat? Yes! So you're Potter? That's what I've been trying to tell everybody! I'm afraid your little spree's all over, Professor. Puffster, this whole thing is preposterous! Fluffy is incapable of killing anyone! Janice! Oh, I'm so glad you came back. Miss Claridge met Fluffy. She'll tell you. She'll tell you he's as gentle as a lamb. I hope they stake you to an anthill. I miss Claridge. Peggy! Hey! Now hold still, Professor. Leave hold me still. alone. Everything's Give all me. right. Oh, don't, don't, what's that? What's that? He's got a gun. He's got a gun. Run, run, run. He's got a gun. Run. Good heavens! Now he shot Mother! <sighs> Get him out of here. I'm sorry. I'm sorry I shot your mother. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yes, I'm dying. Now, Mother, must you always disagree with me? Good heavens. <laughs> it, it's quite pleasant. <laughs> Probably the best thing for her. Well, it's only a pellet gun, Miss Claridge, or, you know, like a sedative. Well, I guess we better carry her upstairs. I'll lend a hand. Come on, then, right, Mr. Let's make Clark. Room, let's let him in. Let's go up the daisy. Up, 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 up you go. Up, 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 up. That's it. Here we go. Up, up. Well, Miss Claridge, I know this is an untimely hour, but we're going to require a full statement from you. Oh, yes, officer. I'll report to headquarters just as soon as Mother's taken care of. Thank you, Miss. <laughs> There's a reward posted. Come on, grab your guns, everybody. Out of the trailer. Let's get that man killer. Yes, sir. He's around here someplace. So let's go with it now. All right, you guys. Everybody... We're going to miss that little guy, but we sure tried to get him to stay here. We should have insisted. Oh, give me that. Hey, that is gin. Oh. <laughs> Bless me. <laughs> Who was it, your wife he got? He got the venison. We're in. It's Mexico. <laughs> we'll pull out at dawn. I'm dead. 
Long live me! <laughs> Come on and sit down there. Hey, you guys. I thought you was out there looking for that lion and ate up your buddy. Oh, we figured the cat would die of indigestion anyway, so... <laughs> <laughs> die of indigestion? Hey, that's comical. <laughs> now then, we'll go south through the mountains, see? <laughs> How much money did you bring? Oh, about 500 dead. <gasps> My George, I left my wallet. You can't write a check? The trip's off. And you better get out of here before you involve us in a hoax. Uh, will you slow down? I've got a key to the French doors. But the police had your wallet. By now, you're dead. And dead broke. Will you both relax? I've got $10,000 in cash hidden up in that apartment. Hey, that sounds like a pretty nice retirement fund. We'll have to get it tonight. Oh, yeah, before dawn, anyway. OK, <laughs> so we head south through the mountains. Now, hear this. Last name. Element two. Van Potter. 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 P -O -T -T -E and don't get ahead of me. May I have your first name? Daniel. Daniel. D-A-N-I-E-L. So shoot him on sight. Look, and please listen to me. I can Daniel. catch my cat with a leash. Oh, Nobody will get hurt. Yeah, He's miss... not a man eater. Your middle right, name, you middle name, order, Ellsworth. The oh, cat is a domestic well. creature. I've raised the since name, he was a... the name of the institution. Braden. And Fluffy didn't eat Claridge. Start looking for him. There's something fishy. Data your commitment. Braden is an institute for advanced studies. Sure it is. Uh, Give him a comfortable room. The best. The best. Oh. Come along now, Daniel. Come on. Come on, Daniel. You, uh, need any help? Nope. That sure took the steam out of him, didn't it? <laughs> Read. <laughs> Oh, please. Lady, we've already run down six strange noises. Yeah, uh, uh, check your plumbing. Oh, that's all right. Anytime. OK. Yeah. Bye. Thank you for coming down, Miss Clary. Not at Let's all. Let's sit over here. I wish you'd listen to me. Fluffy's never been mistreated. He won't understand. Now, don't you worry. Our boys will get him. And we'll have him stuffed for you. Can I make a phone call, please? Why, of course. Just tell me where, and I'll put it through for you. Dr. A.E. Braden at the Braden Institute. Potter! Potter, is that you? Uh, sir, I I'm afraid I must ask you to use your influence to bail me out. What? I can't hear you. I can't hear you. I said... I said you'll have to bail me out before they shoot Fluffy. Well, I'm afraid that that's impossible, Potter. They are threatening to book me. You must issue an immediate statement to the press divorcing the Braden Institute of any connection with you or your alliance. Well, that's impossible. We must view this whole thing in a detached, pragmatic light, Potter. You are done. They're impounding everything, including your planarium worms. But those worms are educated, Doctor. You've got to put a halt to this. It's too late, Potter. Your premature conclusions had us all convinced that that lion was harmless. He is! But with armed hounds and braying men chasing him, he just might revert. You will not issue the statement, then? Absolutely not. All right, when I am done, Potter, you will wish that that cat had eaten you. The staff here has volunteered for jury duty. And after I am through testifying, you will be guaranteed a soft, permanent position. A padded cell for life. Now, look, look, look ho hold on. No, there, there's only one lion, but, but he can't be both places at the same... Look, madam, we've checked your place four times a week. Yours, too, we checked. Uh, no, I tell you, it's... It, it's... Thank you, Miss Clary. She's been a big help. You're very welcome. This will nail him. Good. I know you're out there, Miss Clary. I hope you'll have the grace to say a few words with the disillusioned spelunker. I promise not to bite. 
What I have to say is of something more than passing importance to you and your itinerant family. You making threats? Maybe he slips into another of his ulterior egos. Hear him out, miss. Keep your distance. He's subject to seizures. Welcome to my humble quarters, Miss Claridge. I'm sorry, there's so much between us. All right, say whatever you have to say. Of course. As we touched on earlier, unbridled ignorance is on the rampage. So I will not attempt at this late hour to appeal to your intelligence. Rather, let me prod your selfish streak and your first. Please, we're in this together and it's going to cost us both dearly. Sounds like blackmail. I'll get the tape recorder. You reported me. You identified me. You filed a complaint and you've agreed to testify. In other words, you stabbed me in the lobby and now you've come down here to twist the blade. <laughs> Cancel your globe trotting. This is going to cost you every nickel you've got, plus your self respect. And what's worse, it's going to make a pathetic laughing stock of your father. You are truly mad. I am raging with reason, Miss Claridge. Let us disregard the fact that my career is already destroyed, but not seven years of dedicated research. That cat is worth, in time and hope and effort, not less than a quarter of a million dollars. And I've got news for you. He didn't eat your father. That's fraud. Add to this, you and your father are destroying the Braden Institute, which amounts to another several million dollars. Anything else? Yes. I am going to sue you and your family for complicity in my false arrest. Unless, of course... Of course what? You use your head and bail me out of here right now. Now, Daniel, the picture isn't that black. Remember, the Birdman of Alcatraz continued his studies for some 60 years. In time, I'm sure that... <coughs> Suggested, officer. Get into the cell block. Oh. Now hear this, all units. The lion has just been spotted 18 miles east of town, trotting east on Highway 7. All units proceed at once. Oh. 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 Just, just find my 
my glasses. I will eat my glasses. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, oh, there I am. And now I can see. I can see. Oh. Sorry, your phone's off the hook. Everybody gets a coffee break but me. You know, and he might decide to visit old haunts. Yeah, here's the key, Catfish. Why me? Because you've had more experience with this kind of thing. Yeah, but Clarence knows his own apartment. Now, let's not quibble. Now, remember, the money is in the desk drawer. We'll keep a lookout. Now, don't forget that picture of Janet. I know, on the mantle. Yes. Hey, fellas, give me a mite more booze. Better go and check on Mrs. Claridge again. Heaven's sakes. Mrs. Claridge, time to get up, Mrs. Claridge. Up we get, up we get, Mrs. Mrs. 
Come on, come on. Don't you say, you you just watch yourself. You just watch yourself. All right, now, get back. Just a minute, Miss Clary. Daddy, Miss Clary. You just watch yourself. Stay right where you are. Watch out, you lion. Mrs. Claridge, would you please wake up? You stay right back. You stay where you are. I'll get you out of this. Don't worry. You stay. All right. Somebody trying to take her away from you? Hmm? Barricade yourself. Barricade myself? <laughs> Barricade myself. <laughs> oh. 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 Who's that? I've never seen such a heavy sleeper. You keep an eye on Mrs. Claridge. Are you sure that lion can't get in here? I know it. Who the devil are you? I'm the night window washer. I'm looking for apartment 343. Get out. Mister, there's a lion out there. He just nearly tore me to ribbons. If you don't get out of here, I'll tear you to ribbons. Now hold your horses, will you? Hold your... I didn't come in here by choice, you know. I'm going. I'm going. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Again, Potter is armed and has taken Miss Claridge as hostage. Officers have been instructed to shoot on sight. Oh. The reward posted oh. by the Lions Club has oh. now reached Baltimore. Oh, Daniel, you haven't got a chance. Turn yourself in. Over your dead body. Oh, cut me loose, and I'll give you my car and you can run. No, we're going to find Fluffy, and then I'm going to find your father. Ow, that hurts my wrist. Well, you're the one who locked us together. <laughs> Not a bad combination. Listen, I know a private airport. I could help you steal a plane. Wouldn't it be terrible if we got stuck in this thing between floors overnight? I have some very dark pancake makeup in the apartment with your hair part in the middle and glasses. Glasses? Well, a depressingly short ride. Now, where would you go if you were a lion? Let's see. Well, you'd have gone for food. We were starving, and your father said he had some venison. So? Oh, 
Where is the venison? Where is the venison? Where's the venison? That's it. What Fluffy ate was the venison. Now, was your father in the apartment when it happened? Or did he faint, as you did? I just thought we could see better. You just thought we'd let somebody know there's somebody in this supposedly deserted apartment. Doesn't it occur to you that your father may have stumbled off in shock? That he may have suffered a heart attack? That he may be lying in a crumpled heap somewhere? Or worse, experiencing shock upon shock that he may have taken his own life? Oh, that's ridiculous. What do you mean, shock upon shock? He was so depressed at not finding you here, he didn't care what happened to him. Oh, my father would do no such thing. Who stopped yanking me around? Oh. Then he's an opportunist, as I am flight in jail, cashing in at my expense. Well, he won't get away with it. No, wait. Wait, it's not here. Oh, no! No! You know, you're right. I'm crazy. Because if I had any sense, I'd strangle you right now. In fact... Daniel! Dennis, listen to me! With everybody in town trying to destroy my life's work, of course I blow my top. But I'm only out to save Fluffy and to help your father. Please believe me. You might even be of some help. The police. I've known him since I was a little girl. He had a key. He went straight to the desk and he got something that he knew was there. Then he decided they'd love to have your picture as a keepsake. Need anything more be said? Oh, we drove, Father, to... Oh, this is, this is terrible. Daniel, this is awful. That's what I've been trying to tell you. Leaving you to face a charge of manslaughter. That's what I've been trying to tell you. And if you get you. shot, he'll be, he'll be responsible for murder. Oh, Daniel, this is terrible. That's what I've been trying to tell you. I know just where to find him. There's a trailer camp on the edge of town. Come on, we've heard too no, late. No, not until I find Fluffy. And we've got to break out of these things. It's a matter of finding something to pry open the link. Ah, can opener. You know, it's funny. But I'm glad you're not a nut.
dies a thousand deaths. The brave man, only one. Close your eyes. Somebody else heard a lion. I heard a lion. He's right here in this hotel. Yes. Angel. Angel, dear. Angel, please. Angel? Him. I am dead. <laughs> Darling, please. Had brought my mother to a place like this, I wouldn't even be. He is right here in the Claridge Arms Hotel. Now, you get over here fast. Would you please total up my bill? I believe I'll check out. Can't win them all. you to buy another car. We got $10,000. Tut, tut, you're just used to throwing money away. She's nearly patched. Mr. Claridge, you may as well come out, sir. Hey, get out of here. That's a sick man. Sick? Most everybody in town believes he's dead. I told you to buy another car, Catfish. Close the door. Go 
your wife and daughter are waiting for you to come back, Mr. Claridge. Never. But they love you. I love them, too. But I won't go back. The lion's over there. The dogs know that. Come with us, young man. Oh, it's going to be great. I'll buy you a dozen lions. Party right here. My cat hasn't begun to eat yet. Suppose I tell you that I have Mr. Claridge in here as an appetizer. That's true. My father is alive. I don't believe it. Well, even if he is, uh, we have orders to shoot that lion. 
Well, you people issued those orders. What if I proved to you that Fluffy's as gentle as a pony? You're not. Stand back. Ready, Mr. Claridge? Officer, I think you know what you can do with this. All right, Fluffy, come on, boy. <laughs> For heaven's sakes. Well, I'll be twist. I guess we had you all wrong, Professor Potter. So you're Professor Potter? I certainly am. Uh, do you mind? You're trying to make a monkey out of me. Oh, no, no. We correlate the human being's performance with those of the so-called lower animals in order to establish a valid scale of comparative intelligence. Understand? Yes. Ready? Get set? Go! <laughs> See, my dear, these tests have a very practical purpose. Now, Daniel. <laughs> Daniel? No, please. This is not the time or place. Fluffy! Fluffy! Fluffy, come help me! You're just tuckered out, aren't you, boy? Thank you, Peter. I'll meet you outside. Hello, Tommy. Has Mother checked out yet? Just now. May I have a piece of paper, please? Anything you'd like me to tell your father when he returns, Miss Claridge? The plane isn't leaving for three hours. If he returns before then, have him call me at the airport. Too bad you can't wait for him. Well, somebody's got to mother mother. I'll hold her hand as far as New York, and from there she's on her own. If father wishes to get in touch with me, I'm leaving an itinerary through April. Yes, ma'am. Uh, help you, sir? Oh, yes. Uh... I, I noticed that you uh, welcome pets. I have a rather exceptional experimental cat. Very well disciplined, gentle to a fault. Actually, it's only physically that yes. he resembles a lion no. at all. No. I take him everywhere the, I go. The meal hasn't been delivered yet. Sir, uh, your cat would be most welcome, sir, but we have no vacancies. We're primarily an apartment hotel. Oh, dear. We've driven quite a distance. You wouldn't happen to know of a rooming house nearby, would you? We need accommodations only for the night. No, I can't think of one, sir. What about my apartment? 
Well, now, Miss Claridge... Oh, now, Tommy, really, why can't you move my things out and start renting it? It's just wasted space, year in and year out. I'll tell your father, but I think he'd rather hold it for you. At any rate, it's available tonight. So you and your cat make yourself comfortable. Thank you. Thank you very much. Misomorphic. Morphic or whatever, they don't come any nicer. Uh, two, four, one, Mr. Uh, Potter. Potter. Uh -huh. I'll have the linen changed. Thank you. I'll get fluffy. Hello, I'm Robert Brighton. I believe I have a reservation. Oh, yes, Brighton, the bridal suite. <laughs> Congratulations. Thank you. Uh, could you wake us up at six in the morning, please? Yes, we'll ring. No, I'd rather you didn't. The telephone sometimes startles Fluffy. Fluffy? My cat. Uh, I wouldn't want him to cry out and disturb your other guests. We'll have someone rap at your door. Fine, thank you very much. Come on, fellow. Come on. Mr. Sweeney. Uh, are you just gonna stand there and let that thing go on upstairs? What thing? Wh the lion. Now, Mr. Sweeney, you know better than that. But I'm telling you, Griswold, he's bigger than a polo, po po polo pony. You. You are going to pieces, Mr. Sweeney. The trouble with you is you've been neglecting your cat. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes, yes, yes. A lot of the guests have heard him meowing. Meowing? What does that got to do with the lions? Everything. You see, you are beginning to feel guilty. And this causes the image of a cat to grow larger in your mind till it assumes monstrous proportions. Now, you go up and feed him, and you'll feel a lot better. <laughs> Listen, did or did not a lion just register here? What? A lion, king of the beasts. Oh, why, certainly. We put him in the, uh, the elephant suite. The what? You know, where we keep your pink one. <laughs> Any word for Mr. Claridge? Uh, not a word. I don't... I... Please. It's not like Mr. Claridge. Disappearing for three whole days without a single word. Letting things... pile up. That's right. Dr. A. E. Braden, Braden Institute. Just worded. Registered at, um... Claridge Arms Hotel, Midland. Fluffy in fine fettle. Uh, notify moment erroneous complaint withdrawn. Mm-hmm. Oh, and add, love to Dinky. Signed, Daniel. Thank you. Good evening, sir. Well, hello. Come in, come in. How are you? Better, I suppose, but I still see spots. Why complain? Oh, the things some people see. Tell me, do you have room service here? Oh, yeah, you dial one and they send it up in the dumbwaiter. Good, we're ravenous. Well, we have something in common. Really? What? I was referring to Miss Claridge. I see she's a spelunker. Yes, yeah, she has been acting a little bit peculiar lately. A uh, spelunker is one who explores caves. What's the matter? They don't answer. Oh, let it keep ringing. Retirement. 
你唔好理我，你做你的工，我做我的工啦。Answer the phone. Thank you. I bet he'll answer it now. Miss Claridge is quite forget about, isn't she? Yes, poor child. I suppose she's gone this time for good. Oh, the father. Really? What sort of person is he? Crazy, that's what. Oh, he looks meek and mild enough, but he's dangerous. I know the type. Believe me, keeps too many guns. I wouldn't be in your shoes, young man, not for a minute. If he comes back in ill thoughts and finds Janice gone, well, he just might turn. Turn? Hello? Room service. Oh, yes. Uh, we'd like 35 hamburgers, please. Yes, that's right. 34 with onions and one without. And a pot of coffee. And if possible, a tub of pablum. That's right, I said 34. If, if you don't mind, sir, I'm feeling somewhat queer. I think I've been too cooped up. Oh, well, don't bother then. I'll, I'll finish up. Thanks. Maybe I just need glasses. No, you needn't warm the milk. Just make a mulch of it. Yes, about three gallons. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, sugar would be a fine idea. About a pound and a half. No more, though. Uh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you. Okay, I'll buy it. You'll have to buy it. Sorry, I can't get in my door. The wall keeps moving. Let me help you, uh, Mr. Sweeney. Would you? It's very kind of you, sir. Mm -hmm. well, watch that. Now you go in there and feed your kitty, Mr. Sweeney, before this whole thing gets too deep rooted. What do you mean by that? I can't do that. Prove it. Pardon the interruption, sir. That's all right. But I'm Griswold, the manager. We're trying to reach Mr. Claridge, and sometimes he telephones his daughter oh, here right. in this apartment. Well, of course, I'll have him ring the desk. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Fluffy, come on in here. Don't you want your hamburgers? <laughs> Let me take that for you, Mr. Claridge. Oh, thanks. Well, 
Well, sir, I, I sure enjoy these outings with you fellas. Uh, breathers, I call them. <laughs> I kind of hate to go back to the hotel. Well, don't. You know, I gave four different women a chance to be happy. I had to scuttle every one of them. Oh, oh, oh now, now, Captain. A large, furry, night-prowling animal has run four of his mules off lately. Also... Officers, you've come to the wrong place. A rather surly gentleman who lives on the next estate keeps an ill-tempered Doberman. The other night, we were taking a stroll, and he almost scared Fluffy to death. Fluffy? My cat. <laughs> <laughs> Stomped on his tail. Don't scare him half to death. What are you doing up there? Now look out! Look out! Look out! Hey, boy, don't be scared. He didn't mean to hurt you. <laughs> Professor, get oh, Please let me get a oh, shot at him. Poor fellow, scared to death. Let's see what they did to your tail. Stand back, Professor. Stand back. Let me get a shot. Let me get a shot. <laughs> Dare you barge in here and try to shoot my cat? That's a pellet gun. Knockout pellets to put him to sleep. Absolutely harmless. Now, please, come on. Give me the gun. Keep your distance. Can't you can't do something before I fall into his jaws? Professor, I am under instructions to capture, impound, and lock that lion up. Fluffy has never been locked up in his life, not for one minute. Why, that magnificent animal is the culmination of seven years' study. He has perfection in the lion. He is incapable of ferocity. All right. All right. If he's as sweet and meek as you say he is, you can have him back. But in the meantime, I gotta put him in a cage. Cage my cat? Fill him with anxiety? Get out of here. Get out of here. I'm losing my grip. <laughs> Professor, please, hand me the pellet gun back so I can take him alive. Otherwise, I'm gonna have to take him with this. Fluffy, get out of here! before you pass out. Chief, help us! Help me! Help me! I said, send two squad cars, an elephant gun, and a straight jacket. are trying to impound Fluffy. Oh, you can't be serious. On, on what grounds, Professor? Some local crank has reported him to be, now hear this, dangerous. Dangerous? Fluffy? Oh, no, I never heard of anything so crazy. Why, 
Well, we'll have to see to it that reason prevails. Now, here. You take Fluffy in my car, scoot across the state line to some little out-of-the-way place, and shoot me a wire. I'll hold down the fort here. Right. Come on, Fluffy. Let's go, boy. Come on. Let's go. Go ahead, Fluffy. If a monkey can do it, I can do it. We've left the rampaging ignorance of the law far behind. <laughs> Are you catching cold? Come here, open up. Open up. Nice and wide. Come on, open up. Come on, now, open up. Open up. Nice and wide. Ah. Say ah. Ah. Now you have no inflammation. That's all right. That's good. Possibly a mild allergy. The hackberries are likely to send this time of year. Rest up, Fluff. We'll find a spot for the night. <laughs> okay, stay stuck and die miserable. You know, the least you could do is stick around for a little game of poker. Sure, what's a couple of days more? Yeah, just two more days to explain. Oh, don't go back, Jim. This is the first time in two years you've taken off. You know, you are violating the Bill of Rights. It says right off in the preamble before it gets around to saying anything else that a man's first duty is the pursuit of happiness. You better do it while there's still some place left to fish. You know, they tell me they're going to rezone Yellowstone National Park for high-rise apartments. Well, I'm... I'm sticking... sticking around because of Janice. I don't know what more you could give her. Yeah, she's seen everything, and... Been every place except the top of Mount Everest, and she got halfway up there. Well, well thanks. I, I can see to it that she meets a respectable young man and settles down. <clears throat> you know, the girl hasn't found herself. That's why she keeps bouncing all over the globe. Well, let's go, boys. don't have that much pablum, dump in some oatmeal. It doesn't matter. We're famished. Right. Fluffy! What are you doing? I told you to pay out of that closet, didn't I? Didn't I? These things belong to Miss Claridge. Now get out of here. Come in. Find anything your size? No, I, I don't wear... I'm sorry. My cat opened this thing up, you see. Yes, you said he was well-trained. I ran off without our tickets. I'll just get them while you're uh, picking things over. Ketchup, just, just some smelling salts. Smelling salts? Oh yeah, here we go. Hello, I don't hold that. I don't go. 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 Don't go.
I'm as hungry as you are. I told you there was something strange in that room. We'd better feed it. Yeah, find it off. Oh, 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 Shake hands with Miss Clara. Keep away from me. Keep away from me. <laughs> you think you're being funny. <laughs> All right, Fluffy, go sit in the corner. Go over the corner. You see how gentle he is? Actually, you've hurt his feelings. Oh, I'm very sorry, but I'm a little sensitive myself. Why don't you lock him in a bathroom or something? Oh, Fluffy wouldn't harm a flea. He likes people, especially pretty girls. <laughs> All right. Come on, Fluffy. Go to the other room. Come on, boy. Go on. I've met all kinds, but never a lion tamer. It happens that I'm a professor of comparative psychology, Miss Claridge, with the Braden Institute. More precisely, Daniel Potter. I don't know whether this is a pleasure or not. I'm surprised they let you bring him in here. No one objected. Believe me, Fluffy is the product of selective breeding. I raised him. I molded his personality. He's really much more like a lazy old sheepdog than a cat. Much rather have a lazy old sheepdog. I don't care to have him showering his affections on me. Hey, I notice you've got the makings of a martini in there. Would you like me to make you one? No, thanks. I have to leave, but you can help yourself. There's cheese and a few tidbits in the refrigerator. Okay. We now conclude our program with five minutes of the latest news. No further report as to the whereabouts of Professor Daniel Potter or his lion answers to the name of Fluffy. Three officers Potter shot are still unconscious. Potter is reported to be a psychopath with homicidal tendencies. Extreme oh. caution should be exercised in dealing with him. Outwardly, he is described as being deceptively mild, even ingratiating. We will give you further reports from time to time as bulletins are received. Oh. The city council today took action. Char. <laughs> Sharp and tangy. Want a slice? Uh, I, I, yes, I, uh, I, I may have a smidgen.
You two wait here. They can't even afford a doorbell? Shh. If you interrupt a train of thought around here, you might put off meeting the Martians another 15 years. Doctor, but we're looking for Professor Daniel Potter. Hmm. Hmm. I've got it. I know I've got it. <laughs> Excuse me, sir. Don't uh, be repetitious, young man. We heard you. He's in his laboratory down that corridor to the right. Oh, and uh, be very careful. When Potter's on the threshold of something, he can be quite excitable. <laughs> off your last run. Incredible, Dinky. How about that? How about that? Dinky hasn't run this maze in two months. We're definitely improving his memory. Have a banana. Oh, Go well, get your you. progress chart, Dinky. Go ahead. Go Professor ahead. Potter, we're here to investigate a number of complaints to the effect that you're keeping some sort of ferocious animal here on the premises. Ferocious? <laughs> Ah, oh, thank you, Dinky. Ferocious, huh? Well, I wonder who that could be. You suppose it could be Millard? Or Melba here? Or could it be these ferocious denizens of the jungle? Gentlemen, for seven years here at Braden Institute, we've been conducting an experiment to rid the so-called lower animals of ferocity, anger, fear, the predatory instinct, if you will, with the ultimate aim of eliminating such baser drives from Homo sapiens. I must say, to date, we've been remarkably successful. And the only really ferocious creatures in this room are you and I. What, uh, what sort of complaints? First off, Norden Farm says that in the past six weeks, five of their Jersey cows have stopped giving milk because of strange, guttural noises after dark. Mm-hmm. Go on. And a farmer across the way says that...